Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about four-sided polygons and specifically we're going to talk about quadrilaterals, four-sided polygons. So what are polygons? Polygons are, four s or, uh, polygons are plane figures. They consist entirely of segments. So we have example on the left-hand side, example on the right-hand side. Example on the left-hand side is a polygon. Example on the right-hand side is not a polygon because it does not consist entirely of segments. Uh, AD is not a segment, so I do not consider uh, ABCD on the right-hand side a polygon. So again, they consist entirely of segments. Secondly, they can uh, consist of consecutive sides that intersect only at endpoints. So on the left-hand side, we have an example of a polygon. On the right-hand side, we don't have an example of a polygon because consecutive sides AE EC <coughs> intersect only at endpoints. So E has several endpoints for BE and DE, CE and AE. So the example on the right is not a polygon. Okay. A couple other criteria. Uh, the third is that each vertex must belong to only two sides. So the example on the left, I have a vertex A, vertex B, vertex C, it belongs to only two sides. In this case, I have vertex A, B, C, and D. And in the case of B, I have a vertex that belongs to one, two, three sides. So the example on the left, that would be considered a polygon. The example on the right would not be considered a polygon again because B belongs to three different sides. A, D, B, D, uh, and C, D. Uh, fourth criteria, consecutive sides must be non-collinear. So if I had a polygon A, B, C, D on my left, that would be a polygon because the consecutive sides are collinear. Um, and on the right-hand side, I would not have a polygon because A, B, C, D, E has two consecutive sides, A, B, and B, C, that are collinear. So example on the left is a polygon, example on the right is not a polygon. All right, naming polygons. So you can name a polygon in a bunch of different ways. The only criteria is you start at one vertex and then you indicate ensuing vertices in a counterclockwise or a clockwise fashion. So I can say A, B, C, D, B, C, D, A, C, D, A, B, or D, A, B, C, if that's uh, the clockwise rotation. Or I could say A, D, C, B, D, C, B, A, C, B, A, D, and B, A, D, C if I were going in a counterclockwise direction. direction. So I have eight different possible names for this particular four-sided polygon. Convex polygon. Convex polygon is a polygon in which, in which each interior angle has a measure of less than 180 degrees. So I have convex polygons and concave polygons. And I think of, this is probably a pretty lame example, but in a concave polygon, I think of this as my cave. So here's this angle. It looks like a cave. It's indented into the polygon. My angle measure here is going to be greater than 180 degrees. Concave polygon is a polygon in which one or more interior angles has a measure greater, greater than 180 degrees. All right, so a concave polygon has one, at least one interior angle that has a measure of 180 degrees. And in my convex polygon, I don't have any interior angles that are greater than 180 degrees. All right, let's talk about diagonals. The diagonal of a polygon is just a segment which connects any two non-consecutive vertices. So I have one uh, vertex here, another here. So let's call this vertex here A and B. Diagonal will not connect A and B, but a diagonal will connect B and C. Diagonal will connect B and D, or B and E, but not B and C. All right, so diagonals of polygons are segments which connect any two non-consecutive vertices. And we'll talk about counting uh, the number of diag diagonals by polygons. Okay, now let's talk about quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals are four-sided polygons. And at a higher level, uh, quadrilateral consists of parallelograms. So parallelograms, I got a little misspelling here. Parallelograms are quadrilaterals in which both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So I have one side on the top, one side on the bottom. 
those two sides are parallel, and then left and right, those two sides are parallel as well. The parallelogram uh, are quadrilaterals, four-sided figures, in which both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Okay, rectangle, rectangles are quadrilaterals, and they're also parallelograms. Rectangles are parallelograms in which at least one angle is a right angle. And it just so happens that if I have one angle that's a right angle in the parallelogram, that all my angles are going to be right angles. So I have my parallelogram marked up, uh, and this should indicate that I have parallel sides. Not congruent sides, but it also is the case that I have, I'll mark it up this way, I have opposite sides are congruent, and they're also going to be parallel, and then the angles are going to be right angles as well. So rectangles are parallelograms in which at least one angle is a right angle, and it ends up being that opposite sides are congruent as well in a rectangle. A rhombus is a parallelogram in which at least two, meaning all of the consecutive sides are congruent. So a rhombus has all consecutive sides that are congruent. A rhombus is a parallelogram and also a quadrilateral. And a kite is a quadrilateral, but not necessarily a parallelogram, in which two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides are congruent. So two disjoint pairs, disjoint pair of consecutive sides are going to be congruent. So uh, as the name indicates, it looks like a kite. And there are a bunch of other features about a kite which we'll learn later. So now we're just reviewing at a high level what those uh, requirements are for a given quadrilateral parallel parallelogram. A square is a parallelogram that is both a rectangle and a rhombus. A uh, rectangle, it has uh, all angles that are 90 degrees, and a rhombus, all sides are going to be congruent. So I have a figure in which this opposite sides are parallel and congruent, and all the angles are going to be right angles. Right, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So typically we indicate the parallel sides as the top and the bottom, but it can be oriented either way. The parallel sides are called the bases of the trapezoid. So I have a base here, and then I have a base here. Those are the parallel sides of the trapezoid. An isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid in which the non-parallel sides, so the bases, are congruent. So the legs are the non-parallel sides, and the legs are congruent. In an isosceles trapezoid, the lower base angles are congruent, and the upper base angles are also congruent. So here I have my upper base angles. As indicated, my lower base angles, these are the legs. And then I have my bases as well. Okay, so let's bring all this together. I have a four-sided polygon, and I have uh, on the higher end, I have a quadrilateral. And then below quadrilateral, I have parallelograms. And below parallelograms, I have rectangles and rhombuses. And then uh, a figure that's both a rectangle and a rhombus is a square. And then I have rec uh, quadrilaterals that are kites and also trapezoids. An isosceles trapezoid um, falls within the trapezoid category. So when you think about whether or not all uh, quadrilaterals are parallelograms, you realize when you're flowing in the downward direction, it's not always the case. Some quadrilaterals are parallelograms, some are kites, some are trapezoids. But when you think about uh, whether or not all squares or rectangles or rhombuses, well, that's the case that's always going to be true. So as we move down from top to bottom in this diagram, I have some quadrilaterals or parallelograms, some quadrilaterals are rhombuses, some quadrilaterals are squares. Some parallelograms are rhombuses, some parallelograms are rectangles. When we move in the opposite direction, we see that all squares are rectangles, all squares are rhombuses, all squares are parallelograms, and all squares are quadrilateral, quadrilaterals. All kites are quadrilaterals, all isosceles trapezoids are trapezoids. But again, only sometimes are trapezoids isosceles trapezoids. So when we draw this higher level figure, it's a way for us to define the relationship between the different parallelograms and uh, quadrilaterals.